obviously there won't be an updated remake of this picture. Cell phones have scotched any notion of that. Although hostage dramas remain a durable subset of the crime genre. In the actual incident that inspired this story, the kidnappers were all apprehended, convicted, and sentenced to prison terms. All well and good. Until the Stones opted to use, for publicity purposes, the real names of husband and wife Jean and Doris Courtier in this film. Even though the names of their kidnappers were changed, two of the convicts brought lawsuits contending, one, that they should have been paid by the producers since it was their story as well, and two, the characterization of their actions in the film would ruin their chances for rehabilitation after release from prison. Well, not only was the case dismissed, Jean Courtier actually took the opportunity to deck one of his kidnappers in the courtroom in full view of the jury. The judge refused to declare a mistrial. I like that little epilogue. This was the first feature film for actress Hildy Parks, who'd previously done all of her acting on Broadway. She was also a fixture on early TV game shows and New York-based soap operas. When her film career didn't take off, Parks moved into production. She and husband Alexander Cohen were prominent theatrical producers, enjoying a run of successes that stretched from the 60s into the 90s. For more than 20 years, Hildy Parks wrote all the Tony Award shows that her husband produced. She won an Emmy for the televised 1980 edition of the show and another for a gala 1982 show called Night of a Hundred Stars, held at Radio City Music Hall. Jack Kelly, the brother of actress Nancy Kelly, had worked steadily as a supporting actor in dozens of movies and TV shows, but it wasn't until 1957 that his face became a fixture in American homes, after he took the role of Bart Maverick, brother to James Garner's Brett Maverick in the popular Western TV series. That'd be Maverick, for those of you who are too young to remember. Of course, a couple of Kelly's tormentors in this film made their mark in television as well. After making a few more 50s noirs, like The Killing and Murder by Contract, Vince Edwards was finally cast as a good guy, crusading Dr. Ben Casey in the popular series of the same name. And in 1959, John Cassavetti starred in the short-lived Johnny Staccato, playing a jazz pianist detective working the Big Apple. The show didn't even last a year but its application of noir style to the small screen has made it a cult favorite among noiristas. Before the decade was out, Cassavetes had established himself as a filmmaker as well. His improvisational technique would have a major influence on the next generation of movie makers. Cassavetes maintained his acting career into the 1980s, mainly to help finance his independently produced movies. It was something of a signature for Andrew and Virginia Stone to always have the same guys portray lawmen in their movies. Their cops were often named Pringle, Pope, or Cole, and were mainly played by Jack Crucian and Barney Phillips, both of whom appear in The Night Holds Terror. When you've seen enough of the Stones' movies, Blueprint for Murder, Julie, Cry Terror, all set in different cities around the country, it's pretty funny when the same cops with the same names show up every time. Well, the Stones may not have created any masterpieces, but their films were always inventive and exciting and pushed the limits of what was possible with a small budget and lots of creative adrenaline. I suspect I'll be showing more of their work in future Noir Alley episodes. While we're speaking of masterpieces, next week I've got a film that definitely fits the bill. It's The Third Man, often called the greatest British film of all time. If you've seen it, then you know it's always worth a rewatch. And if you've never seen this incredible film, mark your calendar for next weekend. And check in on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed to let us know what you thought of The Night Holds Terror. See you next week in Vienna.